Hello and welcome to Basingstoke Croquet Club. You may have watched the uh, companion series of video modules about golf croquet which I made a year or so ago. This is a, a series about the basics of association croquet and we're going to explore the world of, a cro of association croquet and so that you'll approach it with confidence because many people find it a little bit intimidating at first. So what is association croquet? Well if you've played golf croquet you'll know that golf croquet is a, is a game between two sides, one of which plays with the blue and the black ball and the other plays with the red and the yellow ball. And it's exactly the same in association croquet. Two sides which can be either singles, in other words one person has two balls or doubles in which case one person has uh, one ball each and although there is another variant of doubles as well with a way you can play either ball. It is different from golf croquet in that when it's your turn to play whichever side you're on you can play either of your two balls. The order on the peg doesn't matter in association croquet except in far as of course once you started to play with, say, the blue ball in a given turn, you must continue playing with the blue ball and you can't swap to your other ball. And just as in golf croquet, we have an alternate set of balls known as the secondary colours, so that you can have two games going on on the same croquet court at the same time. And so green is equivalent to blue, pink is equivalent to red, brown is equivalent to black and white is equivalent to yellow. Now as we said in the golf croquet module if you have someone who has colour vision deficiency then they should be given the opportunity to play with the primary balls uh, blue, red, black, yellow because they find those easier to differentiate than the uh, secondary balls. So what is the object of the game? Well first of all the court layout is exactly the same as for golf croquet, six hoops and the peg in the middle. Now if you're a golf croquet player you will know that the peg carries no particular function in golf croquet but it does in association croquet. And the aim of the game is for each ball of a given side to run all the way around the court going through all the hoops, that's uh, 12 hoops each and then hit the peg. So they score a point for each hoop that they run and finally a point for hitting the peg. So that's a, tot a possible total of 26 points for each side. Now again if you're a golf croquet player you'll know that the uh, maximum score that's possible is in a normal game seven hoops to six. So only 13 hoops can be run in a golf croquet game. In association croquet, because each ball has to run uh, 12 hoops and hit the peg, a total of 51 points, hoop points and peg points can be scored in a given game. So that inevitably takes rather longer than for a golf croquet game. And perhaps that's one of the reasons that people find association croquet a bit off-putting, because whereas a golf croquet game will last perhaps 50 minutes, a typical association croquet game will last something of the order of two and a half hours. And so you've, you've just got to get used to that and appreciate the fact that you're playing a completely different game with different objectives and a completely different mode of playing. So where did croquet come from? Many people think it must be French with a name like that. Well it isn't. Croquet is virtually unknown in France. It began in England in about 1850. John Jakes, the founder of the sports goods firm that is still in operation and actually makes an awful lot of things connected with croquet and other sports, John Jakes went on a holiday to Ireland in about 1850 and saw people there playing a game which they called crookie. And at the time, of course, there was no television and uh, nothing much to do other than to amuse oneself by playing games, parlour games and all the rest of it. Jake's thought, here's a, a game I can make some money from. 
So when he got back home, he produced the first croquet sets with hoops and mallets and balls, not quite like what we have today, but the fundamental ideas were there. And croquet became very, very popular because it was the first outdoor game where ladies and gentlemen could play together. And there are lots of stories of people hitting balls into bushes and a lady and a gentleman disappearing into the bushes to look for the ball. Um, but eventually croquet took off and one of the problems was that there were no proper rules. Uh, Jake's um, published a set of rules which he made up for himself. Other people made up their own rules depending on where you were. And it wasn't until about 1897 when the Croquet Association was formed that a properly formulated and agreed set of rules was published uh, which people across the country could sign up to. And one of the problems with croquet is that because John Jakes was trying to make it appeal to the moneyed classes basically, who else had the space uh, and, and the ability to cut the grass quite short in 1850, um, he invented various names that we're still stuck with. One of which, of course, is croquet. And people sound, think that croquet sounds ever so snobbish, which it isn't. And there are other names as well, like roquet and bisque, uh, which were invented quite deliberately, I think, in order to give croquet this appeal to educated people. Let's have a look at how it's played. Here are two balls. Um, I'm going to be playing the blue ball on this occasion. The other happens to be a red ball, but it could be any other ball, it doesn't really matter. And the fundamental of croquet is that you have to hit one ball with another ball. So I'm playing the blue ball, and my first task is to hit the red ball. And that simple shot is called a roquet. And this is where croquet becomes unique. Having made the roquet on the red ball, I pick up my blue striker's ball and put it alongside the roquet ball. It, in this case, it happens to be the red, but it could have been any of the other balls on the court. And having done that, I now play the croquet stroke. In other words, moving both balls. My blue ball has now ended up very nicely in front of a hoop. It happens to be hoop one. And hoop one has a blue crown to it. You can see that, I think, on the camera. It also has the scoring clips on it. We'll have a look at those in a moment. So, I now have what's called a continuation shot after my croquet shot. And I can simply run the ball through the hoop. And having run the hoop, I pick up the blue clip and I put it on my person. I usually just stick it on my pocket like that so that I can see which ball I'm playing. It's a good reminder. So having run a hoop, I can now have another shot. So I can roquet the red ball again or any other ball. And I'm going to do that. And you notice that as with golf croquet, it's exactly the same approach. Stalk the ball. Swing the mallet gently and I now have a croquet shot. Now you probably can't see very well on the camera but on this very big lawn there are six hoops which don't show up awfully well because the grass is rather barren and bare at the moment. But over there by hoop two is a yellow ball, and that is known as a pioneer. It's a ball out in the wilderness, as it were, a long way away from the hoop that I've just run, and it's there for a particular purpose. It's going to be rocade in a couple of minutes. In the middle of the lawn, close to the peg, 
is another ball, it's the black as it happens, and that's known as a pivot. Now, don't worry too much about the, the, the terminology at the moment, we'll come back and look at all this in a bit more detail in a later module, but just to give you an idea, and we, we, the aim of the game is to use each of these balls as stepping stones to get to our next objective. And having run hoop one, our next objective is to run hoop two, then hoop three, hoop four, and so on. So I'm going to um, put the red ball, which I've just rocated here, across to hoop three as my hoop three pioneer. And in the same shot, I'm going to end up close to the black ball, which is in the centre of the lawn. So here is my uh, blue ball, which has just arrived close to the peg and close to the black ball. And now all I have to do with my continuation shot after that croquet shot is to hit the black ball with a little roquet. So I've roqueted the black ball so I can pick up my striker's ball, the blue ball, and put it alongside the black to play a croquet shot. And th this ball is actually known formally in the rules as a ball in hand. It literally is a ball in hand, although uh, nowadays we tend to kick him along with our feet, but uh, I'm going to put it alongside the black and I'm going to move the black a little bit further towards hoop two and I'm going to send my blue ball over towards the yellow so that I can roquet that. So here is my blue ball, which uh, arrived here from the croquet shot, and as you can see, it's about uh, seven or eight feet from the, from the yellow ball. So I'm now going to roquet the yellow with my continuation shot, quite gently. Having roqueted the yellow, I pick up my blue again, ball in hand, and I put it alongside the yellow and I'm going to do exactly the same as we did down at hoop one. I'm just going to croquet this yellow ball to that side of the hoop, leaving my blue just nicely in front of the hoop. And now I have a continuation shot. So guess what? On the continuation shot, I'm going to run the hoop. And having run the hoop, I can hit all the balls again, and so I'm going to roquet the yellow. And the yellow in that position is known as a reception ball. Um, when it was over here, it was a pioneer and then it becomes a reception ball when it goes to the other side of the hoop and it becomes obviously the ball which I use for the next roquet. I roquet the yellow ball so I pick up my blue ball again, ball in hand and you remember that when we were down by hoop one I sent the red ball to hoop three as my pioneer. Well I'm going to do the same this time to the yellow. I'm going to send it to the next hoop but one that was hoop two, so the next hoop but one is hoop four, which is over there in the far corner. And a, a simple drive shot, leaving my blue to play off the black ball in order to get up to the red ball, which is by hoop three. So I'm putting them in a croquet position and I'm lining, lining them up. So another simple drive shot We'll put the yellow down to hoop four.
the red ball, which I um, put over here from hoop one, has ended up a bit out of position. I'd have really liked it to be about here. And uh, so in order to make my next shot easier, I'm going to bring the black ball over here so that I can get my blue ball between red and the boundary line. So my blue ball ended up quite close to the black and I'm going to roquet the black but I'm going to roquet with purpose. I'm going to hit it fairly hard and that is called a rush. Uh, so it, a rush is the same as a roquet but you're hitting the ball harder and you're moving it to a specific position. Normally in a roquet you don't care where the roquet ball ends up as long as you hit it. This time I'm going to move the black ball closer to the red. Now as you may have noticed the black ball has actually gone over the boundary line here and uh, when that happens it comes back onto the court but it comes back in a yard from the boundary and that's why a mallet is normally a yard long. It's your measuring tool to come in a yard from the boundary and we'll look at the reasons for this in a, 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 a later module. But so I, I, I rushed my black ball off the court, so my blue ball becomes another ball in hand, and I'm going to play a croquet shot again using the black ball, but now aiming to get behind the red ball here, I want my blue ball to be about there, so I can rush the red ball up to hoop three. And this is, again, is a very simple shot, very simple stop shot, basically. So that was my croquet shot. I now have a continuation which is going to be a little rush on the red ball. And you notice that the, the blue ball actually hit the black. That doesn't matter. Ball in hand and I'm nicely placed in front of hoop three. So again a simple drive shot, not too hard. And with my continuation shot, I run the hoop. So my blue ball has run quite a long way through this hoop and I now need to roquet another ball. So my red ball, which was my hoop three pioneer, became my reception ball, so I'm going to hit that again. I'm going to hit it quite hard for reasons you'll see in a moment. So I rushed my red ball off the court, so it comes back on at the place where it went off and a yard in and I'm taking croquet again with the blue ball. Now the reason I rushed the red off the lawn is because the black ball, which is here, is not ideally placed. I would have really liked it to be further down the lawn. So I've got to make some stopping space in order to get behind the black in order to rush it into the rest of the lawn. So by doing a stop shot here on the red, I can get the red down towards the centre of the, the court by the peg, then get behind the black and take that in the same direction. So this is again a stim simple stop shot, nothing very difficult. So my blue ball has ended up quite close to the black. I really need to put black close to hoop five as my hoop five pioneer and then get in a position to rush the yellow ball across to hoop four. The yellow is not ideally placed at the moment so I'm going to rush the little the, the black ball a little bit further down the lawn so as to make the, the shot on the yellow easier.
that rush on the black has brought it down uh, roughly um, what four yards from the peg uh, between the peg and hoop four so with my blue ball ball in hand I now play the croquet shot and I want my blue ball to be about here so that I can rush my yellow ball across to hoop four. Now, this is slightly tight because uh, there isn't a lot of space to play with there. And you have to line these balls up quite carefully. We'll show you how to do that in a later module. So just a quite a simple little dinky shot actually. So, blues end up slightly short, but it's okay. And I'm going to cut rush the yellow across to hoop four. And, and uh, instead of hitting the ball smack on the on the nose, which would say to take it over there, I'm going to hit it slightly on the right, so that it will go towards the hoop. And as you saw, the, uh, the, the, the blue ball hit the black. That doesn't count, that doesn't matter. So my blue ball becomes another ball in hand once more. And I take croquet off the yellow. My blue ball, ball in hand, I put behind the yellow. I'm going to play the croquet shot, which will put the yellow from being the pioneer ball, the other side of the hoop, as the reception ball. And this again is quite a simple little drive shot. And having got to there, guess what? I'll run the hoop. So my yellow ball now becomes the reception ball for the blue again. This is, these are the fundamentals of what's known as the four ball break. Very simple, a break going around several hoops with four balls. And we run hoop four and I'm just going to do one more hoop to, to point out one particular thing. So we run hoop four, hoop five with the red top is the next. Now many people might think here is my blue ball there is my yellow ball pointing in exactly the right direction. Why don't I just rush the yellow across to hoop five and, uh, and, run, the, uh, and run the hoop off the yellow? Because you've been missing a pioneer at hoop six. So instead of taking the shortcut, take the long way around. So uh, do exactly the same as before. Gentle little Okay, I'm going to send the yellow ball up to hoop six and the red ball is in the center of the lawn near the peg and I'm going to play off that to come back to the black ball. It's simply a question of keeping all the balls in the right places at the right time. Croquet is really quite an easy game if your balls are in the right places. If you leave balls behind, or if you jump out of the normal process of scoring a four ball break, you're going to make life difficult for yourself at some point. So, just do the ordinary thing. You might have to walk a few more paces, but it's worth it in the long run. So, I'm going to send the yellow up to hoop six, and this is a half roll. The blue ball will go roughly half the distance of the yellow, and we'll look at these sort of shots in another module. After that half roll croquet shot, my blue ball has ended up about six feet from the red. I just need to touch it with my continuation shot and then of course I have another croquet shot. ball in hand and now I'm going back to the black ball which is beside hoop five. 
You see, if I'd done the, the quick way and taken the yellow across to hoop five, I would have had two balls down there and I only need one. So I, was, I would have been cutting my own throat. There's no point in doing that. So I'm just taking croquet and going back to the black ball. And you notice that this time, my blue ball is alongside the red. I'm leaving the red here in the center of the lawn. And this is what's known as a thin takeoff. The red ball must at least quiver. It doesn't have to move any great distance, but it must at least shake. So there we are, croquet shot, now a continuation shot. And you'll notice that my black ball is actually on the wrong side of the hoop. I really want it to be on the live side of the hoop, because we're going to come through the hoop from the other direction. So I'm going to put it there. It's much easier to approach a hoop from the right side than the wrong side. Blue ball becomes a ball in hand. I'm taking croquet off the black, and this time I'm just a bit, really just going to put the black ball back more or less where it came from. <clears throat> Another simple little drive shot, putting the blue straight in front of the hoop. Now it's just drifted off slightly, but it should be okay. Oops. Oh dear. It wasn't okay. Uh, we uh, failed to, to, to run the hoop. So and what happens now? I've made a mistake. It would now be my t opponent's turn to play. And my opponent could walk onto the lawn and he could choose to play either of his balls. But remember, both of his clips are still on hoop one. So he has to find a way of doing what I've just done, but getting all the balls back into the right place. And as I've just fluffed that hoop, I take the blue clip off my person and I put it on the hoop. So that shows both me and my opponent how far I've got to with the blue ball. So those are the fundamentals of both croquet and the absolutely key structure of, of association croquet which is known as the four ball break and basically you carry on in doing that sort of thing uh, until you've run all the hoops and then hit the peg with both of your balls and we'll look at all of this in a bit more detail in, uh, in, in the later modules. If you look on the golf croquet modules you'll see that there are um, pieces there about the equipment that we use mallets, balls, hoops and so on and also something about the very basic shots, the drive shot and the stop shot and also how to run hoops. It's exactly the same so rather than repeat it here just have a look at the golf croquet modules. Association croquet does have a wider range of strokes in terms of the ability to, to, to move two balls at the same time in different directions but again we'll look at that in more detail in a later module. So I hope you've enjoyed this one and uh, we'll pick up next time with some more detail uh, about how we go on from here. <laughs>